Every summer, my family and my uncle's family would take a week-long vacation together. We would always go somewhere different. One summer we went camping, and had a pretty good time. The next year, however, my brother and I talked my parents into renting a cottage in the woods. It was in a similar area to where we went camping, but staying in a cottage seemed like more fun than sleeping on the ground. My older brother Alex and my cousin Jenna were the same age, and they were like best friends when they were together. I was kind of like the third wheel, because I was two years younger. At that age, two years was huge. I think I was 12, my brother was 14. The cottage itself was nice. It was in a remote spot with no neighbors anywhere nearby. It was a smaller wooden structure with a wraparound porch that looked over the forest. Our parents loved the isolation, and I'm pretty sure it was my dad that found the place. This was before Airbnb, but it was a short-term rental similar to that. There were only two bedrooms, both of which went to the parents. The three kids ended up camping out in the living room, where there was a pull-out couch and another single couch. Even though we liked being out there, there wasn't a lot to do. Most of the time, my brother, cousin, and I would go off by ourselves during the day. There was a small lake nearby, and we would also just hang out in the cottage or play in the woods. One day, we were in the woods, playing some game that Alex and Jenna had concocted. I don't remember the details of it, but it was fun for a while. Like I said earlier, I was a little younger and I was like the third wheel. I knew that my brother was getting annoyed with me and probably just wanted to hang out with our cousin. So he started being really mean to me and he always knew just how to push my buttons. He was really a master of getting under my skin. Before long, I was really angry at Alex and I stormed off on my own while my brother laughed at me. That made it even worse. I followed a faint trail that wound deeper into the woods. Before long, I was farther into those woods than I had ever been before. About 15 minutes in, I noticed a person behind me. I assumed it was Alex or Jenna coming to make amends, so I kept walking, not wanting to face them yet. But when my curiosity got the better of me, I glanced back, and I saw that it wasn't my brother or cousin. It was a man I'd never seen before, and he was gaining on me. I picked up my pace, trying to get away from him. I didn't know if it was anything to worry about, but I was uncomfortable enough to want to get away. These woods were supposed to be private for our place, or at least I thought. There were no neighbors close by, and it certainly wasn't a public hiking trail. The woods were thick around me, making it hard for me to see. I didn't dare shout for help, because I was scared it would only draw him closer. The path was barely visible ahead of me. It was covered in fallen leaves and branches. I had to be careful not to trip, but I also couldn't slow down. I kept telling myself that my brother or cousin would realize I was gone and start looking for me, but deep down, I knew they couldn't do much for me. It wasn't long before I broke into a full-on run, Every few seconds, I looked back behind me to check on the man. It seemed that he was keeping up, even though I was moving really fast. After running for what felt like forever, my side began to ache. There was a sharp pain with each breath. I slowed to a fast walk, trying to listen to any signs of the man following me. It was silent, except for the sounds of my own footsteps, so I thought I might have lost him. Then I looked back again, and I saw that he was still there. I realized then that I didn't have a plan. I was just running hoping to either find my way back or to bump into my brother and cousin. The thought of being lost out there, with some stranger wandering around, made me feel sick. I tried to remember any advice I'd heard for what to do when you're lost. They usually say stay put, but that didn't seem like an option, with somebody possibly after me. Eventually, I reached a fork in the path and stood there for a moment. I knew this might be my best chance to lose the man. I went right, thinking it might circle around towards the cottage. The path was a bit overgrown, which made me think it wasn't used much. This was both good and bad. Good because maybe the man wouldn't follow me that way, but bad because it was hard to move. The path did in fact lead back around, and it was somewhat parallel to the original path. Through the thick bush, I could see the man. He was approaching the fork where I was before, and thankfully, he went left, so I knew I was in the clear. After walking for another 20 or 25 minutes, I finally saw a clearing that led back to the cottage. My legs felt like jelly, but I pushed myself to move faster. It was a great sight when I finally broke through the trees and saw the cottage. I didn't even care about getting in trouble for wandering off anymore. I ran up to the cottage, bursting through the door, ready to spill everything about the man in the woods. As soon as I went through the door, I told my parents everything. I explained how I thought I'd heard my brother or cousin following me, but it turned out to be a man that I didn't recognize. I told them about running, getting lost, and finally finding my way back. As soon as I finished my story, I realized that my parents didn't believe me. My dad asked if I was sure that it wasn't my imagination. I told him that I was positive that I had seen a man. He must have thought that because there shouldn't have been anyone else in there, making the whole thing even creepier. 
No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't convince the adults that there was a man out there, and they never did anything about it because of that. We stayed for another three days after that, and I didn't go into the woods again for the whole time. This happened on a camping trip that I took with some friends a few years ago. We were all in our late thirties at the time. I married, and my son was three years old back then but this trip was just me and my friends Daryl and Jimmy. We had been going camping together for years, not each and every summer, but as much as possible. The spot for this trip was a remote section of a national park that was about five hours away for us. It was one of the more remote spots that we had done before. My friend Daryl was driving, because he had the best vehicle for this kind of thing. Not that the roads should be that bad, but we thought it would make sense to have a good truck, just in case. The guys picked me up in the morning. I tossed my backpack in the back, and we took off. When we got there, there were some other cars and trucks nearby and on the way, so even though it was basically in the middle of nowhere, we weren't alone. It was a spot that we had planned to use because it was on the map and it looked like the best choice. There was a lake right next to it and it was close to one of the outhouses. It was an established area, so you were supposed to use the outhouses in order to keep the poop situation under control. It was still only 3 in the afternoon when we got there, leaving us plenty of time to get set up. As soon as we put our gear down, I noticed there was another group close by. There were a few separate sites in that area, and one of the others had people on it already. Once we got set up, me and Jimmy went over to say hi to our neighbors. There were two of them sitting around a small fire in the middle of their site. As soon as we walked up, I could tell they were pretty drunk. Remember, this was around 4 in the afternoon. I know a lot of people like to get wasted in the woods, so I wasn't judging. We talked to them for less than 5 minutes, and then went back to our site. When I got back, the three of us just went back to what we were doing. That night we were hanging around the fire, and it sounded like there was a full-on party going on at our neighbor's site, but not the fun kind. We could hear their drunken rambling, and at times, it became aggressive. I thought a fight was about to break out between them, but I'm not sure if anything happened. The shouting went on for hours, but eventually, they must have passed out, and so did we. On the next day, the commotion started even earlier. They were blaring music beginning at around 1 in the afternoon. We went out for part of the day, and when we came back, I walked past their site. Of course there was booze all over the place, and I think they were probably doing a little more than that. I didn't see anything though, it was just a suspicion. By around 6 o'clock, Daryl decided to do something about it, because it was really out of control. He walked over to their camp to talk to them about the noise. I watched from a distance, and I was a little nervous about how the encounter would go. When Daryl returned, his expression told me everything I needed to know. The conversation had not gone well. The guy he talked to basically told him to screw off. According to Daryl, they were pretty wasted, and it seemed like they were ready to fight him for even going over. Daryl said that he got out of there before things came to that, but he told me that if he stayed any longer, then things would have gotten ugly. That didn't surprise me much, because it sounded like they were about ready to fight each other the night before. We stuck it out for another night, and the next day, we got up and went for a hike around the lake that was next to our site. We didn't see our neighbors while we were out there, probably because they were still passed out from the night before. When we returned from our hike, we had hoped that the guys would be gone. Instead, we found three of them loitering around our truck, one of them sitting on the hood. Daryl was obviously annoyed and approached them. Before he got there, I ran and got between them, because I thought Daryl needed a second to think before doing something he might regret. As soon as we got close, Daryl began yelling at them to move. Then a second of them jumped onto the hood of the truck. I could hear the metal buckling as he did. It was a clear sign of disrespect, and I knew these guys were trying to start something. Daryl was fuming mad, and I was having a hard time keeping him away from those guys. Eventually he seemed to calm down a little bit, so I let Daryl go. He walked up to the truck, and as calmly as he could, he told them to get away. Just then, one of the guys got up and shoved Daryl. He stumbled back. That was all it took for things to get out of control. Me and my other friend had no choice but to step in. We couldn't let Daryl face them alone. I hadn't been in a fight since grade school, so I hardly knew what to do. I always thought I'd be able to talk my way out of any conflict, but this was beyond that. As I rushed to help Daryl, I grabbed one of the other guys by the arm, trying to pull him away. This wasn't just a drunken brawl, and I didn't know what these guys would do. For all I knew, they were armed. I made it out of it without getting hit, but Daryl took a few punches. Nobody really won, we all just flailed around like idiots for a while, and then everyone just kind of stopped. 
The important thing, though, is that they left the truck alone. As soon as they were gone, we decided to take off right away, even though we were planning on staying for one more night. I was on a road trip for work about ten years ago, and I was driving by myself. I knew I was going to have to spend a night somewhere on the highway, but I hadn't planned anything out specifically. When it started to get dark, I was keeping an eye out for somewhere to stay. There were a lot of decent looking spots, so I didn't worry. By 10 at night, I knew it was time to stop, so I pulled over to the next motel that I saw. The place was one of those run-down motels that you see sometimes, but I'm not a princess or anything, so I stopped there. The check-in was quick, and the guy behind the counter barely looked up from his book. He gave me my key, and I found my room, and then went in. It was nothing special on the inside, and it smelled like cigarettes, even though there was a no smoking sign on the small table next to the bed. None of that bothered me much, so I went to bed less than an hour after I came in. I woke up early the next day, and decided to hit the road again. The morning was crisp as I stepped out of my room. I just wanted to grab some breakfast, and get back on the road again. Walking to my car, I noticed a guy standing too close to it. He was looking into the driver's side window, as if he was trying to figure out if there was anything worth stealing. I hit the lock button on my key remote twice, on my car that makes the horn go off slightly. The man jumped as if I'd caught him. He mumbled something under his breath and walked off. It was weird, but I figured I'd scared him off and didn't think much of it as I went to my car. When I got in, I looked around and made sure there was nothing stolen. It all looked fine. The only thing that was left there was my old laptop bag, which had some of my dirty clothes in it at the time. From the outside, it might have looked like it could be something expensive, so I thought that might have been what he was eyeing. I'm sure he would have been disappointed if he broke into my car and stole it though. Not giving the whole thing another thought, I started my car and began driving. The morning roads were pretty empty, just the way I like it. I was making good time and the weirdness of the motel was already fading from my mind. Then after 10 minutes or so, I saw a car behind me keeping pace. This guy seemed a little too close to me. He was literally inches from my back bumper, and I was getting nervous. I tried to shake him off, and turn down a road that I wouldn't have taken otherwise, but he stuck with me, like we were playing some sort of cat and mouse game. That's when it hit me that it might have been the same guy from the motel. It was just a feeling at the time, but I thought it was him. I increased my speed, trying to lose him on the back roads. I took another two random turns, then eventually found myself on an unpaved road that I didn't know. I knew I was lost, and the other car was still behind me. He was so close that I could even see him, but it was hard to tell if he was actually the man from the motel. Eventually, he actually bumped into my car from behind. I swerved, but quickly regained control and kept driving. I pushed down the gas pedal, trying to get away from my stalker. I pushed my car harder, and I could hear the engine struggling. I was trying to find my way back to the main road, or to anywhere with people and civilization. The farther I drove, though, the more I felt like I was driving into the middle of nowhere. It seemed inevitable that I would have to turn around at some point and go back the way I came, but that seemed impossible at the moment. There was no choice but to keep going. Finally, things began to look more familiar. I was on a paved road again, and I started to see some houses on both sides. The car was still behind me, though, and I didn't want to start heading home until he was gone. I spotted a gas station up ahead and made a beeline for it. When I got close, I noticed a cop car parked in the front. I knew this would be the end of it. I pulled in and watched in the rearview mirror as the car that had been following me slowed down, then he took off in the other direction. When I stepped out of my car, I felt the leftover adrenaline making my hands shake. The whole situation was nuts. I had gone out for a work event and found myself in some high speed chase with a would be car thief, or whatever he was. I needed a minute to collect myself, so I headed into the gas station. The place was quiet, just me and a few customers including the cop. The clerk looked bored enough to fall asleep standing there. I grabbed a coffee and topped off my car with gas. Even though the cop was there, I didn't bother telling him what happened because I didn't think they could do anything. My real fear at that moment was that the guy would be waiting for me somewhere when I left and he would be back. Because of that, I hung around the gas station for almost an hour. When I was finally about to take off, I looked around to make sure that I didn't see the car that was stalking me. It looked clear, so I started driving again. For the rest of the way back, I didn't see that car again, so I guess he gave up. I'm pretty sure it was the man from the motel who had followed me, because it was too big of a coincidence otherwise. He must have thought there was something valuable in my car, but he would have been wrong. I didn't have much, and if I did have anything, 
and I wouldn't have left it in my car overnight. I still wonder how long before he would have broken into my car if I hadn't walked up. I was probably five or six minutes away from a break-in on my car, but I managed to avoid that as well. I live in a small town that's kind of in the middle of nowhere. The nearest city is Denver, Colorado, but the town is really quite isolated. I had been living there for about two years at the time, and I moved there for work. One of my bosses had a farm that was on the outskirts of town, and he would have people over sometimes. The farm was roughly a 30 minute walk from the main town, and it was between fields of corn that stretched endlessly in all directions. I drove there, planning to enjoy the evening, and not really thinking about the journey back. The party was already in full swing when I arrived. Everyone was outside, and there was a fire going. Everyone who I worked with was there, and there were some others that I didn't know. I had a few drinks, more out of social obligation than desire. Before I knew it, it was getting late, and the stars were vivid in the clear night sky. By the time I was getting ready to leave, I realized I'd had a few too many drinks, and I couldn't drive. My boss agreed to let me leave the car there, and come back in the morning. Since most people had left already, there wasn't anybody to give me a ride, and that's why I decided to walk. The night was getting cold as I left, but the walk was not long, and I had a good jacket. I kept on the side of the road with the cornfields to my left. It was peaceful in a way, but also eerily quiet. I always liked the nights out there, because the stars were so intense. As I walked, the occasional car zoomed by. I could see the headlights coming from a fair distance, but I didn't bother trying to hitchhike because it was only a short walk. I saw one car coming from behind, and I moved aside on the highway as it passed, just in case it didn't see me. I was standing almost in the ditch as it passed me, and its headlights were bright. I had to cover my eyes because the high beams must have been on. It soon passed, and I watched it disappear ahead of me. It was an older red car, and it was loud, almost like there was something wrong with the engine. The road curved gently up ahead, and I could see it bending out of sight. It wasn't long before that car had passed that I noticed two figures in the distance, two men walking towards me around the bend in the road. There was something unsettling about their appearance, maybe it was the way they seemed to be walking. They were walking fast towards me, so I was a little put off. Also, there wasn't much around there that could be walking distance. We were close to town, but I couldn't think of a reason why anybody would be walking away from it. There were just a few farms out there. Anything else would be way too far to walk. Without much thought, I veered off the road into the cornfield to my left. The stalks were tall, providing enough cover for me to crouch down and remain unseen. At the moment, I thought I was being too paranoid, but it's better to be safe than sorry. I peeked through the gaps in the corn, watching them approach. They were now close enough that I could make out more details. One of them was carrying something long and slender in his hand. It could have been a baseball bat, a pipe, or even a firearm. The other was empty-handed, but they both looked dangerous. Both of them were a lot bigger than me, and seemed to be in their mid to late forties. They stopped around where I ducked into the cornfield, and I could hear their voices. Though I couldn't make out the words, the tone was enough to convince me that they were looking for me. Why else would they be out there, and why else would they stop right where they must have seen me last? I stayed hidden, my breath was shallow, and I was trying to make as little noise as possible. I stayed in there watching them through the stalks of corn. At one point, one of them began walking towards me. For a second, I thought he saw me, but then the other grabbed him by the arm, and they both walked away. To this day, I don't know why or what they said to each other, but for some reason, they decided to leave. After waiting for at least half an hour, I cautiously made my way out of the cornfield, scanning the road around me. When I finally stepped back onto the road, I was cautious, looking around for any sign of them. The road was empty though, so I began walking again. My walk home was quick, and it only took me another 15 minutes to get into the town. When I was really close to my house, I saw a red car pass me, and it sounded like the car from earlier. I think the two men I had seen from before were inside. It was too quick to be sure, but I think it was them. They didn't stop, so I kept going and went home. At work the next week, I told this story to one of my co-workers. I described the car, and he said that he had seen or heard one around town before, but didn't know the guy who drove it. Even though I thought they were going to do something to me, there was nothing I could call the cops for, so I had no choice but to let it go. Over the next year or so, I had seen that car around our town a few times, but I never had any other encounters with the driver.